In today's video, we're gonna try freeze drying what are by far the most requested things, watermelon, water, and dry ice. Guys, we've had a few videos in the past using our Harvest Right freeze dryer. That's a very interesting machine. It cools stuff down, pulls a vacuum, and then warms it up just a little bit. As it warms up, all of the frozen water inside the food sublimates, turns into a vapor, and gets pulled out. It extracts all of the water from the food without it ending up soggy or mushy or anything like that. And in those videos, we have had so many requests for things to freeze dry. And by far the most common three have been watermelon, dry ice, and water. You want to see what's left when we extract all of the water out of water. Well, we're going to try it. This is just about one week's worth of asking for water, dry ice, or watermelon if I didn't miss any. There's a lot. Here's the basic idea. We're going to take some dry ice, some sliced watermelon, and some water in a few different ways. We're going to put them in our freeze dryer and we're going to see what's left after we let it run. Well, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen if we freeze dry these things, and so we're gonna try it. We've got ourselves a watermelon, we've got some dry ice, and then of course we have water. And we're not just gonna put a cup of water in, we're actually gonna do a few different varieties of all of these. Now for the watermelon, this is supposed to work best sliced into thin slices and then frozen before we put it into the freezer. So that's what we're gonna do with the watermelon. With the water, we're gonna have a few varieties of pre-frozen and not pre-frozen. We're going to have tap water, we're going to use salt water, and then we're also going to use distilled water. That should be water that has all of the impurities taken out, so it's just hydrogen and oxygen combined with nothing else in there. Along with the three types of water, we're also going to try some juice. Ingredients are water, cane sugar, and juices. So we're gonna try a little bit of this as well and see what we get. Dry ice is dry ice, and I don't think it's gonna change a whole lot no matter what we do with it. So we're gonna take a piece of that and we're gonna put that in as well. I should also say that we're gonna do something a little bit different with the freeze dryer, and that's that we're gonna take our dry ice, and we're gonna put it in, but we're gonna modify how the pump runs because the dry ice is going to expand a lot before the freeze dryer kicks in with its vacuuming, and we don't wanna build up pressure inside the freeze dryer. So we're gonna have it set up with the vacuum running the entire time, I've been assured by the wonderful people at Harvest Right that that is going to work and should not mess anything up. But it may be a little bit interesting with some of the other liquids that are going to be in the machine at the same time. All right, let's take our dry ice, our lemonade, both frozen and frozen, our three varieties of water, frozen and unfrozen, and then our frozen fruit. Mostly we've got watermelon, there's also just a little bit of cantaloupe in there too to see how that turns out. <laughs> Guys, the Spice Scope kits are out and available now. They come with everything that you need to build your cell phone spy scope. Works as a microscope, so you get all of the parts, and this way you don't have to go to like several different stores trying to find everything. So you don't end up with anything extra, however, you do get some really fun slides. You can make your own slides, and you can also get... Some of these bonus slides that have hidden codes on them. Once you find all the letters, you can unscramble them to reveal the secret code, and that will unlock something very special. Guys, these are awesome. Click the link in the description below to get yours now. Guys, it's been about 24 hours. Our ice, our juice, our melon, and our dry ice have all been in the freeze dryer this whole time. Let's see what's happened to them. Well, looking in, so a few observations before I even open this. So this is still vacuum sealed right now. It's under fairly low pressure. There were a couple pieces of dry ice I had right here in between this mold and the slices of watermelon. So just right there on the paper towel, there were two chunks of dry ice, about the size of a deck of cards. Uh, and those are just gone, and I did watch a little bit as this was going, and those just dissipated away into nothing, which is what we'd expect, it's dry ice. It sublimates away, and even though this did get pretty cold, it's not down to the temperature that prevents dry ice from sublimating, and then the lower pressure probably just helped pull that away as well. I can also see that our six trays that had the raspberry lemonade in them, those heart shapes, those still appear to be full of substance, and then looking back beyond that, I can see where we had our distilled water, our tap water, and our salt water. And those three trays seem to be showing something pretty interesting. Different levels of content. 
So let's open this up and see what we've got. That is some interesting looking watermelon. Let's take a look at the watermelon first. So I should explain that I didn't actually put the watermelon in in the best way. Because we didn't have this in contact with the heating element laying flat, it didn't all sublimate out at the same rate. It pulled a little bit out of the rind and the sides where it was leaning up against the heating pads in the side of our box, that heated up as well. But we do still have this little frozen section down at the bottom. If we'd done it all correctly, it'd probably be more like this top part. But let's see what this does. So watermelon, of course, normally is very squishy, sponge. it's like a soaking wet sponge. And now, this just snapped right off like a dry styrofoam material. See how light and porous that is. I'm just gonna squish it. I bet this just powderizes right here. Gone. Watermelon dust right there. Cheers. Wow. That's actually a very concentrated watermelon flavor. I was kind of wondering if it would end up being a little bit weak or something, but it's not. It really tastes very strongly of watermelon. I'm gonna get a cup of water and dip this piece of watermelon into it and see what it does. The texture has changed a little bit. The outside is like a little bit slipperier than a normal watermelon slice would be, but it's still very identifiable. You can be like, oh, it's kind of a, maybe a piece of watermelon that's been sitting out for an hour. But that piece had not been in there long enough to fully reconstitute. And so it's like watermelon on the outside with a little crunchy layer in between. It's a pretty interesting snack, I like that. Got some pieces of cantaloupe here. You can hear how lightweight and rigid that is. <laughs> it's actually really good. I honestly am not usually a very big fan of cantaloupe, I like that quite a bit. Really, really light and fluffy. Good crunch to it. The crunch is lovely. Pretty good. All right, same thing. I'm gonna take one of these pieces of cantaloupe, throw it in the water. I was not a fan of that texture. It seemed a little bit extra hard on the outside, which is kind of interesting because just the freeze-dried version is super soft and powdery. This is our Raspberry lemonade here, and these are our three types of water. So I've got things labeled with the little marks. Those are the ones that were already frozen, and then these three are the ones that were not frozen. This is just, this went in as juice. Over here, on this side, this is the liquid side, and this is the frozen side, marked with an L and an F. This was the salt, then the tap water, and then the distilled water. So the one that was frozen, well, mostly frozen. The salt water did not freeze 100%. What the heck? This is like baking soda consistency. It's super, super light and puffy. Like this is not grains of crystallized salt. This is just powder. That seriously just looks like powdered sugar. All right, I gotta taste this. Yeah, that's remarkably salty. Something else that's really interesting is this salt is basically evenly distributed. That's about as high as I poured the water. Like it hasn't really dropped down at all. It's just got suspended at the same height that it was poured in. So this one was liquid and I can see some bubbles in it, which I assume means that some bubbles started to form as it was freezing because it was under low pressure. We did have the vacuum pump running for a lot of the time. And as soon as that dry ice sublimated away, it seems to drop in pressure quite quickly. Gotta be some really cool use for salt that's in that powder of a form. I'm not sure what it is yet, but I'm gonna be thinking about that. Okay, let's take a look at our tap water. Now, unfortunately, I think that as our salt water was bubbling, I do think it launched some salt. We can see we've got little bits of salt all over the edges and in between and stuff like that, and that wasn't there originally. But we can see what I think is actually just the residue from the tap water. This is all the minerals that comes out in the tap water right there. I am going to see if I can taste those minerals. I don't know if it'll stick to my glove. I'll try it just with my glove dry. If that doesn't work, I'll try like licking my finger a little bit first and see if I can get any on there. 
Maybe a very slight earthy taste, I, I don't know, about as much taste as tap water has, I suppose, which makes sense since it's from tap water. That's everything in tap water that isn't water. And then our distilled water, uh, well, it's got some flakes in there that I'm fairly certain are salt that got thrown by the other ones, but for the most part, I think that just dissipated into nothingness. I'm gonna do a little test and gather up some of these flakes here and see if it always just tastes salty. Yeah. That's just salt. So the distilled water completely disappeared. Okay, here we go. So these, these were raspberry lemonade. This is a raspberry lemonade that does not have any high fructose corn syrup in it. So these three were frozen, these three were not. I wonder if we can actually pop this out of the silicone. Ooh, that is fragile. This actually looks like it could be delicious. So this should be like a concentrated raspberry lemonade flavor. Oh my gosh. Whoa. That is a concentrated raspberry lemonade flavor with about the consistency of very lightweight styrofoam and cotton candy. I would buy that. If you could buy that, I would buy that. So guys, if you own a super fancy high-end restaurant and you have fancy desserts, I recommend freeze drying some raspberry lemonade. Don't freeze it first, and then you sprinkle that on top. Everyone will think it's delicious. I have no idea how you did it. I wanna see if we can reconstitute this. I'm gonna pour a little bit of water into one of these, about how much water there was before, mix it up and see if it turns back into lemonade. That looks pretty well mixed together. A spoonful of it out, that looks like about the right color. Hmm. That's very similar. Yeah, that's really good. It's a good raspberry lemonade and it's literally just the exact same ingredients. We just took the water out and then added water back in. So it should be possible to make a really good lemonade powder by freeze drying, say a whole bottle of this stuff. And then you just take the powder and pack it down and it would be real juice. It wouldn't just be like a simulated like, oh, it tastes kind of, no, it'd be an actual juice. It would be from concentrate because boy, are you concentrating it. So you could definitely make your own if you wanted to go hiking off in the mountains somewhere and have some like really good made with actual juice powder. It's not just like a Kool-Aid type thing. That's delicious. Water pretty much disappears. Salt water makes a really cool salt powder. Freeze drying juice made with cane sugar and at least with the raspberry lemonade. That works great. I want to try that with some other kinds. I'm curious what kinds of juice you can turn into a DIY juice concentrate powder. Guys, thank you for your suggestions. We love seeing those. If you have any more of them, let us know down in the comments. Guys, that's all for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see that box up at the top is gonna take you directly to our last video. You should go check that out. The other box is gonna show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next, and this bomb here in the middle is very special. You hit that, you join the club, you get subscribed to the channel, and you never miss out on a video. Don't forget to ring that bell so you get the notifications, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.